Hey guys, I'm Alexei from Ace5 Studios and this is my quick introduction to 3D Code Retopology. It is a super handy tool. It'll accelerate your workflow when you retopologize stuff. So check out this very quick tutorial. Hey guys, Alexei from Ace5 Studios and this is just a quick introduction to 3D Code. I'm not going to go over all the tools. This is just a basic kind of explanation of what the different modes are and how to retopologize stuff um, if you're a Cinema 4D user. So you basically have two uh, sculpting modes here, which are voxel and surface. Voxel is like volume sculpting, basically, if you zoom in. Um, navigation is basically like Cinema 4D, just Alt and uh, mouse clicks. Uh, hit the S key to turn on symmetry and the X axis. You can see the plane now. So here, if you, for example, use the Grow tool, and you press W to see the wireframe, you see it's like a VDB mesh. Um, you can keep dragging it out and it doesn't actually stretch the polygons. But if you switch to surface mode, by on the you can switch each layer individually to surface or volume mode, to surface mode. Then you get your regular uh, surface mode. So now when you press grow, you'll see that it actually stretches all the polygons. So, so we get this stretching. So that's not very pretty. But it does give you the uh, ability to sculpt more detail like you would in a traditional sculpting app like Cinema 4D. Like, not traditional sculpting app, but like in other apps when you sculpt just on the polygons. So when you move stuff, uh, so move, like, you know, put these into shortcuts. You press the space bar to see all the tools and then you can drag them into the little hotkey shortcuts here. So space one will give you the move tool. Now when you move something, as you can see, you get these kind of bunching up and Whereas in voxel mode, if you do the same thing, let's go back to voxel mode. Um, in voxel mode, if you use the move tool, which is here, um, you'll see you won't really get this kind of sharp edge because it'll keep smoothing it out. Like yet to some extent, because it retopologizes, but generally it keeps on retopologizing so you don't get this increased detail in those areas. So holding the shift key smooths everything out. Now, retopology. Uh, so you know the difference between voxel. So when you want to do retopology, you import a surface mesh because you want it to keep all, you don't want it to be voxelized or basically it's like, think of it as like a VDB volume mesh. You don't want it to be volume mesh. You want to keep all your details that you have had. So uh, I'm going to just add a grow thing here just to demonstrate. Uh, it's not really going that fast. There we go. I just want it. This is like the cool thing about this volume mode is you can do this. You can't really do this in regular sculpting. Let's just move this guy out. I'll be using that to demonstrate uh, some things in Oops, that's too much. Let's sculpt some little eye holes. And there you go. And maybe switch to surface mode now. And get our pinch tool. Pinch, there you go. Scroll down, then we can just the strength. There you go. So let's see how we retopologize this. So the easiest way, there's a couple of things. Firstly, you can just go straight to the retopo room and you can start painting polygons on this. There's a whole bunch of tools here. The ones that I use most are points and faces. This is basically a very easy way. You just left click to drag points. You can just drag, draw them out. And then as you mouse over, you'll see these polygons kind of appearing. And to lock one in, you just right click. So you can just do this quickly like this. Very handy. The next useful tool is strokes. The strokes is kind of similar. So for example, you draw this across here, you draw this across here, and then you just draw in where you want your polygons to be. And then you hit enter and every intersection becomes a polygon. So it's very handy, especially if you have a stylus to sketch these out. Um, you can also draw from a point. So if you draw it like this, and you can also draw and connect them together and to form lines, and then you can just and press enter, and you get this. So that's a strokes tool, very handy. By the way, when you're in your points faces mode, there's here there's little shortcuts where you can go control tool, what it will, that, what it will do. And I like to set the control to split. So when I hold the control key, I can do a quick loop cut wherever I need it. And you can right click and drag on points to move them around. If you click here and you don't want this point, all you have to do is just right click on it. No, just left click on it. Hold your mouse over until it highlights and hit delete key on your keyboard. 
So the next useful tool that we have, actually back to strokes, let's not finish. This is the reason I wanted this thing is strokes is very handy because if you click and drag like this, and then you drag these together. So the orange indicates that it's a full circle. And if you do this and you draw through, then you can just hit enter and it'll automatically draw a cylinder of this. And you can select how many segments there are you want here. So this is 12, if you undo, you can have like 21, you have much more of them. And then you just switch back to your points and faces and you hold the control key and just drag some, draw some loop cuts and it automatically conforms to the mesh underneath. Super fast and efficient. Now, what else do we have here that's important? Oh yeah, the brush tool, very useful just for moving things around so you can move things around. If you want to connect these guys together, I would go back into your points face tool and just right click and drag until it connects and they will snap together. Then you control click to drag this out. Um, basically, yeah, and remember that the strokes tool, it's very handy. So for example, if I draw, I can draw lines from this point here and I can draw them like this, like this, then I can draw, oops, I can draw another like this and draw some more loops here and maybe draw this one to here and draw it like this and hit enter. And that's almost perfect. You might want to go to points and faces and yeah, you know, just stick those guys together. And there's a great tool called R fill, which basically just, if you click, it'll fill it in. If there's a ability to fill in quads, right now you see there's not enough of them because here's only two. So you switch back to points and faces, control click, switch back to R fill, click and ta-da, you filled in your area. So it's very handy to do that very quickly. And the last useful tool I think here is called quads. Quads has a couple of modes here at the top you can pick. So you have trapezoid, which basically click on an edge and you can click once, then you can just drag out yourself a path of polygons. Very handy, pretty good control. Uh, then the next one you have here is direct, which is basically you click and it gives you a more direct route, pretty much the same thing. And then you have parallel, which is also kind of an, kind of gives you a slightly different, well, basically whatever you prefer. The only real different one is two click methods. So you click on edge, then you click here and you click here and you kind of, so you set out your polygons that way. And that's basically it. So like this one's very quick. If you do parallel, if you want to loop around the eye, but see parallel doesn't, it's not the best for this. So maybe direct or trap is it direct would work better here. Yeah. See then it orients along the edge that you're going. Still kind of scales a bit weird. Let's try out trapezoid. That seems to be the best for at least making these kind of loops. And there you go. Then you just and right click here works as well. So you just right click and snap these guys. Okay. Maybe snapping doesn't work with the quad tool. Let's go back to points and faces. Yeah, that seems to work much better. And just control click here and you have your loop. So there you go. And you can always grab your brush tool. Um, brush tool. Brush tool. And you can move large areas around and it conforms to the mesh. So it's super convenient like that. Honestly, I think that's about all that really needs to be covered here. You also, oh, if you want to delete polygons, there's the delete polygon tool, delete edge and delete polygons. You just click on it, you click and delete the polygons you don't like. You just click and drag through a bunch of them. Um, I think that's pretty much all the important stuff covered here. You can add primitives and stuff, but like caps don't really like. I think our fill is much better there. And you have your fill, and then you can go to your points and faces and just add more loops. Although I would make that a different shape, but basically yeah, you have your... And the brush tool obviously has a smooth function. So if you're using your brush tool, um, what is brush, smooth stuff out. It's a bit too strong. Uh, if you hold the shift and then you right click and drag up and down, you can control the strength of the smooth. So just a little bit here and 
There you go, you get a much smaller smooth. And you just right click and drag to make something smaller. So there you go. And you can, and a topology conforms to your eye socket. So that's how you retopologize quickly. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Go check out my website for more stuff. Don't forget to check out my Cinema 4D rigs and tutorials on my website. Till next time. Now, the next thing I want to point your attention to is right now you're in the retopology room and you have your sculpt tree. These are like your sculpted meshes. And then you have your retopo objects, which right now you can't hide it because there's only one layer. But if we create a new layer, then we can hide our old layer and have a new layer. Now, the thing I wanted to show you here is that 3D Code actually has some automatic retopology tools. So if you right click on your sculpt layer, there's a thing called or topo and there's instant mesh and there's also the 3D code one. Both of them have their pluses and minuses, but basically just uh, try instant mesh on auto first. So you click it and you go, okay. And it runs this little window, this little black window pops up, gets a bit confused and there you go. And it appears and you have this kind of auto topology already done. It's not the best, has a bunch of weird stuff, but it's not the worst either. Sometimes it's useful, especially if your mesh is in is stationary mesh. It's a good option. Um, let's hide this guy. And let's right click on this again. And we have Autopo uh, with Autopo. And here you can pick here 5,000, whatever, best quality, slowest. There's a bunch of stuff to read. You can experiment with this. So basically I'm just gonna press okay and It'll ask me if I want to shade some areas which are going to be super dense, like two times more dense. I don't need that. So next, the next thing is ask to place some curves to help guide the algorithms. For example, I want to guide here. I want to guide here. And I don't know, let's say I want to guide here. Uh, it says better not to, first you should try it without curves, but it says there's a bunch of instructions here. So the first time I would try it without curves on your mesh, but if it doesn't, just add them and press next and the algorithm will try and match stuff up to your curves. In this case, probably wasn't necessary. It's probably smart enough to figure it out, but let's have a look what it looks like. Stitching edges, you turn the quality down. There you go. So yeah, it's, I think it's better than the uh, instant mesh one. But still, there's a bunch of stretching here. I guess this curve kind of really confused it because it does have this kind of edge flow going along here. And you kind of have this one and that one. Maybe you should have drawn a full circle around here. So it takes some practice, but that's another useful function of the 3D code uh, auto retopology tools. Hey guys, hope that was helpful. If you don't get something, ask in the comments. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter because I have this series going on for like one minute hot tips and quick tips going right now. People seem to be liking it. Don't forget to check out my website. There's a bunch of character rigs there and there's some free rigs for animation and practice and just a bunch more tutorials. Um, yeah, have a good one.